The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to uh, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com and on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, and on Channel 32 now on Simul TV. My guest this hour is a good friend of mine. Not only is he a good friend of mine, but he's also the host of Paranormal Stakeout here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And I'm talking about our good friend, Larry Lawson. And last week, Larry had a guest on for the second time. And I had actually had this guest on a couple of times on my show here on the Exxon. His name is Ronnie Dawson. And Ronnie is, how would I best explain Ronnie? Ah, uh, this is a tough one. I'm going to bring my good friend here and former police officer, Larry Lost, in to help me out here. Hey, Larry, how are you, buddy? Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me on the show. Good seeing you. It's good seeing you too, my friend. Um, how would you describe Larry Loss? Uh, Larry, Larry Lawson. <laughs> oh, Larry Dawson. I mean, and then I'll tell you how I would describe him. No, you've had a Larry, show Larry twice. Dawson or Ronnie Dawson. Oh, geez, did I say? Did I yeah, say Larry Dawson? I'm you, sorry. You did. See how see how you influence me, old friend. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. How would you classify or describe Ronnie Dawson? Uh, he has uh, quite the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, he he tells a story that 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 kind of stretches the imagination to the point where you you have trouble believing it. I, I, I guess that's the, the kindest way to put it. Um, not sure why. And I guess that's the question you want to ask mm. sometimes when you have guests is why? Yeah. What is, what's the purpose of the story? Now, you had him on twice. Yes. Um, and, and I know the first time you didn't get exactly where you wanted to get with him uh, because you and I had talked about him and and I know you listen to the uh, the uh, reruns of my show. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that he claims to have had sex with multiple extraterrestrials, uh, the fact that he had that he claimed that he had a home invasion by eighteen inch aliens, uh, I, I I always wanted to ask him. Were these the same aliens that you had sex with, you know, like 18 inches? And if you if you did, did you tear them well, to limb? Well, I think he answered that. And there were two different sets of aliens, actually. <laughs> um, here's here, here's the issue. Talk going back to that original show. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't get where we want where I wanted to go because he actually has quite a bit of information out there and he does enjoy talking about it. He yep. is very animated. Um and he he doesn't tell initially doesn't tell a story much different, a lot different than some of the others that we've heard. Exactly. But then it starts to get a, a little, a little bizarre. And I want to couch all of this, Rob. Um, okay. I don't know where his head's at. So let's, let's put that out right okay. now. I don't, I don't know where he, his head's at. He, he, let me say this, that in, in, he, to our listeners, that his story is very questionable. It, it is, and it's simply yeah. but be, because of my police background, certainly yours also, there are certain things that we would expect a rational person, even under stress, to do, yeah. and that didn't occur. And when I did question him on some of that, he couldn't, like, why didn't you call the police after your, your home was torn up? And he really couldn't answer that, uh, except to say, well, nobody would believe me. Well, then why are you actually telling the story all over the internet if nobody believes yeah. you? Why and didn't so, you take pictures? Why didn't you take pictures yeah, was exactly. another question. And we did not get to where the, the whole story the first time. Mm -hmm. And and I, that's why I had him back on the second. Now, what when I say what's in his head, 
what what's his what's his goal? What is his reason for telling the story? Some of the stuff, okay, sounds a little weird, but I mm -hmm. want to have an open mind. I, I firmly yeah, believe that having an open mind and and allow folks to tell their story, I'm not going to judge. But then we're getting into stuff that's really take it it pales with the truth, frankly. Mm -hmm. And it and it, a lot of it has to do with his his face to face confrontation with aliens. I mean, I, I flat out asked him. Uh, he talked about having sex with this blue alien. And I, I got to mention this. I did go back over my notes. First time he was with me, he talked about uh, having sex with the blue alien that looked like the cat. Right. Second time he said the blue alien, it wasn't the blue alien. The other one looked like the cat, but he still was with the blue right. alien. Right, Ex exactly, yeah. So, you know, you, you catch little things like that. Um, but why did he do it? Is it because he wants to be famous? Is it because he really believes it happens? And that's one thing, Rob, I want to be careful of. There are folks mm -hmm. out there that truly believe this happened. Sure. Um, doesn't mean it did. Okay. I We weren't there. We weren't there, but it doesn't mean it happened either. But we don't mm -hmm. always know what their, their purpose is. So I want to, that's why I'm saying I want to couch how I, I phrase this. Is okay. he just a flat out liar that wants to have his name in the paper? I would think he'd pick a better story, personally. But why would he? Because his story is different. You see, that's what mm -hmm. makes it, his, his story different. Absolutely. You know, and plus, don't forget uh, that when, when, when he's telling his story, it parallels so many others until you get to the home invasion with the 18 inch uh, extraterrestrials. Then it also differs when he starts talking about the blue cat lady. And by the way, I loved that one line you used during your show about it being doggy style. He said it. I just questioned him. He, <laughs> he said, he said they did it doggy style. And I asked if he did it. Doggy style with cat lady. I, I don't, I, you know, I kind of yeah. just came out. I apologize to my audience for that. But, you, you don't uh, need to. I, I would have asked him if it was perfect. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, far be it for me to, <laughs> sorry, it, it just was. Uh, yeah. and then, and then I, and then, and then I, I asked him if he had told his wife about it and, yeah. I, and he said, yeah. And I'm like, dude, uh, and, you know, I, I, it just, there were just some things there that, that <laughs> didn't make sense. And I didn't, and you're right about this. That That is one of those catches that people will want to listen to him more. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to provide any actual evidence with it. Now, once again, we got to keep an open mind. Rob, we don't know that it didn't happen. We are surmising right. it didn't happen. We did right. not know that it didn't happen. And I want yes. to make that clear. And, and we don't know that if it actually did happen or if it just happened in his head or mm -hmm. he's just trying to be a sensationalist. And I think that's a problem with a lot of folks that get on the air and yeah. like to tell their stories. Are they really wanting to help and, and solve the question or are they just wanting to be the star for a minute? Well, you know what, Larry, over the years doing this show, one of the little little uh, things that, that I look for that tend to make the story that I'm going to hear more credible than not is when a guest will say, you're not going to believe this, but uh -huh. to me, that means, okay, they are not willing to come forward and, and tell their story unless they use that little disclaimer. You're not going to believe this, but... Larry, uh, Ronnie didn't do that. He just no. comes out bang with his story. It's like a scripted, uh, scripted <sighs> part of a show that you see on Netflix for goodness sake. Yeah. And, and, and maybe that's where it was heading. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, it, 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 it just, it, and the, the, he could have solved so many questions by yeah. just doing some simple things, calling the cops. Uh, there right. was an incident that just happened in Las Vegas that uh, I'm not sure what happened, but a light there's a light in Las Vegas. People yeah. called the police, and these folks actually did something right away. And I don't know the veracity mm -hmm. of it uh, of the story, but they at least called the police, and that's the sort of thing that I would have expected. Here, here's a here's and he did tell part of the story where his friend had a video camera and was supposed to tape it and did not. Right. I get that. I actually get that people uh, freeze and they don't think about what they're, they're they had been planning to do when they freeze. So I actually could get that. 
All right, that's within mm-hmm. the realm of possibility. But then all the things that happened in, in his house, I, uh, being being uh, frozen in in bed, lots of stories oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Of, um, but then he tears up the house, and he's wanting to go hunt the aliens, but he's not willing to call the cops. And here's where I had the problem. But, but he's willing to get on, and he's been on many shows. He's sure. been he's been uh, at speaker at conferences, and he's willing to tell the story there. But when you can actually put it all together, he didn't. So that's what concerned me the most. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know me. I believe there are things out there that we cannot explain. I do. Uh, But I'm not sure what they are yet. And that's what I endeavor to find out, to find those answers. But you got there's got to be some common sense involved too, and I didn't I didn't feel it there, and that's another reason why I wanted to have him back on the show. I wanted to talk with him a little bit more about it, and then when he changed the colors and the um, I won't say gender, but species <laughs> of the aliens, uh, that concerned me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that concerned that concerned me, and then changing his story a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's that's what I did for a living. Listen to stories and, yeah. and listen to pe- how folks change them. So, you know, that that did concern me. But once again, what was the motive? I, I did not believe the story. And I even told him at the end, I said, look, I want, yeah. I don't, I'm trying to be respectful, but this one's hard for me to swallow. Um, <laughs> um, it's tempting, so, but I'm not going to say yeah, it. Yeah. Um, uh and 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 i want to be respectful i do not i i want to be respectful yes but, you know you are dude, you you've got to you've got to give me something to work with and yeah. and tell me why okay the guy froze didn't take the video i get that that yeah. happens in real life it happens when people are having a crime committed in front of them sure but there's too much i'm sorry go ahead no 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 i i, I agree with you 100 percent but from what I understood, he knew when these UFOs were going to be coming. He knew where to go to see these UFOs uh, and, and have contact. Uh, his story, like I said, to a certain point, sounded like just like every other UFO story that you hear. And then oh. when it goes to the, I've never heard of an alien house invasion before with 18, with 18 inch aliens. I've never heard that in 32 years. Never heard that. Uh, then w- with the different species of, uh, the extraterrestrials that he, you know, had made, made love to, I- I've heard that one or two times, but the question that you asked that he couldn't answer was why him, why was yeah. he chosen to be the emissary between, you know, the, uh, the aliens and, and, uh, earth, why would the aliens pick a truck driver to be their emissary. Well, uh, in fairness, All right. they, may not, they may not know exactly who they are uh, connecting with. But if that's the case, why would they pick just one person? Why wouldn't they pick several people and, and maybe from that choose who they want to be their emissary? Right. I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, why him? And, and especially when he... He acted so aggressively towards them. He shy, He talked about shining a laser, laser at right them. at them. Yeah, I mean, and then and then he's upset because the airline pilots got on him about doing that. Well, you just you just can't do. Okay, things now, like- now now you see that that was an interesting point. If the if it was the airline pilots who got got uh, you know, onto him about that, he wasn't shining it at UFOs at all. He was shining them at aircraft. Well, I, I think he was taught he was talking about the use using of it in general, but yeah, but he he may, he may very well be. Yeah. But look, let's look at this other issue too. He talked about a a city sized UFO that came and actually started doing maneuvers yeah. in front of him, su- such such uh, uh, su- such maneuvers that he could see there was a city on top of it. Do you know where he got that from? Close Encounters yeah. of the Third Kind, because yeah, that's exactly I, what the UFO did at the end of the runway. Oh, see, I don't. I, uh, on the landing, I, I on, on, on the, you know, when, when the, the I've forgotten the, about that. The major UFO comes over Devil's uh, Devil's Peak, right? It goes to it goes to the end end of the runway, and then it does a maneuver where it totally flips. I'd forgotten all about that. You're yeah, right. so I did I was, until just now. I was actually thinking about some uh, another uh, individual I've interviewed before, and that person will go nameless, but they talked about a large miles long. UFO 
that traveled over over where they were at, and yet nobody else saw it. Wasn't that a football of the size of a football field or something it, like that? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, and and nobody saw yeah. it. Now, okay, that's why I asked him the question: How big is the town? Yeah. The town escapes me. How big is the town? Yeah. You know, could anybody else have seen this? Right. He says that radar di didn't, didn't or the Air Force or the airport, I, the military, I can't remember which, could, wouldn't confirm or deny they saw it. They just said it was, you know, there, there was something we can't tell you about. I can't remember exactly how I put it, but it was very, very strange uh, because things that big can't be hidden. Heck, we're, we're constantly, yeah. look what happened in Las Vegas. A yeah. light comes down from the sky and tons of people saw it. Well, look what happened at the during the Phoenix Lights. How many thousands of people saw it and called, you know, the the authorities, the local news media, we and had... and something the size of the craft that Ronnie was talking about. Once again, I agree with you. Why wasn't there any other report made to the authorities or to law enforcement or to the media? And why would anybody? Uh, I know this for a fact myself. If you call up the military and ask them if something was on their radar. They're not going to tell you, no, because they don't know who the hell you are. They don't. They don't know, and and they may be doing some testing. Exactly. Ab absolutely, you don't yeah. know who. But uh, the fact that n nobody. I mean, once again, I'm I'm hitting Las Vegas because that just happened. Yeah. They got reports in in their dispatch. People were calling it in. Mm -hmm. We had a, a town here on the on the west coast of Florida in the in the uh, what we call the Bend up by the Panhandle. Yeah. Right. Where uh, I, I can't remember the name of the town. Ocean, not Ocean Breeze. I can't remember it now. But it, Pensacola. It, no, it wasn't in no? Pensacola, but it was in that area. Okay. Um, but and tons of people saw it. So yes, you can argue there's some sort of cloaking device, and I think that's mm -hmm. what he was trying to say. But then, how did he see it? Did they just unveil themselves just for him? Now there was another issue that, that, that came up too. That hey, Larry, came... we've got to take a break, oh, my friend. Sure. No sure. problem. Um, First of all, thanks for being here in Dexo Nation. If you'd like to hear this interview, it's available at www.paranormalstakeout.org. Both of the interviews are available on that website. And if you'd like to watch the TV version, it too is available on Larry's website. Another website to check out for Larry and his crew is paranormalfbi.com. This is the Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell. Larry Lawson is my guest. We're talking about Ronnie Dawson. Oh my gosh, talk about similarities. Hmm. We'll return. Don't go away. Question. What is the name of the unique blend of coffee you get that has been formulated by a neurologist, a neurobiologist, and a pharmaceutical chemist? Answer, you get Beautiful Mind Coffee, a unique coffee blend that tastes great and has herbal ingredients that your brain will love, and it is not just coffee, it's brain alicious. Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, the scientific team that created Beautiful Mind Coffee, decided to collaborate on a coffee focusing on brain health. As for those herbal ingredients found in Beautiful Mind Coffee, Dr. Rathbone, Dr. Jang, and Dr. Winslow, utilizing their combined extensive scientific research background, worked with many natural and herbal products until the exact formulation that is found in Beautiful Mind Coffee was created. With a unique scientific formula not found in any other coffee being sold or served, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Every cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee contains scientifically formulated amounts of maca root powder, green tea extract, and American ginseng, all supporting good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older, just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Did you know that cognitive dysfunction also refers to deficits in attention, verbal and nonverbal learning, short-term and working memory, visual and auditory processing, problem-solving, processing speed, and motor functioning? 
For more on Beautiful Mind Coffee, the three scientists who formulated Beautiful Mind Coffee, and more details on the three unique herbal ingredients in Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available online at Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. To order Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca today. Larry Lawson is my special guest this hour. His websites are paranormalstakeout.org. And if you'd like to visit Larry's um, other website, paranormalfbi.com. And Larry, there's another website for Indian River, if I'm not mistaken. Indianriverhauntings.com. That uh, Both those sites come to the same spot. And that'll tell you a little bit about what my team does to investigate uh, things of the, all things paranormal. And uh, Indian River Hauntings is my historical uh, events that I do. Uh, we were talking about Ronnie Dawson's interview yeah. on your show last week, and yeah. uh, uh, you, you were about to say something, but we had to go to a break. So yeah. if you can continue, I'd appreciate that, friend. And I'm sure. sure cutting you off. Oh, no, I should know better because I, on, on your network, doing the same thing. So I get it. Um, once again, whenever I try to talk to folks, mm -hmm. and like I said, I, I, I try to, I want to be respectful. That's just, that's just uh, how, that's how I like to, that's how I like to be. Yeah. Uh, I, I and like I said, I don't know that Ronnie doesn't believe this. It, I'm, I'm not even saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying I don't believe the story. Yeah. And I I get to that point by asking the questions the same way I did when I was on the job. And I asked him. He he was uh, I, I saw one of his videos that he did where he was apparently doing a presentation of some type, and you yeah. could tell it was a PowerPoint. And he was going through, and the, he kept saying, "We did this, and we checked this out, and we vetted that." And yeah. I asked him. <laughs> Who's we? I mean, right. was, was it a scientific organization that you went through it with? Was it uh, something like MUFON? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And he said, well, it was the same guy that his friend who forgot to videotape it the, that first night. He has to be careful because when you present it, we did this and we did that. You're giving the impression of it being a exactly. another organization. Yeah. And, and, that, and when he told me that, I became a little bit concerned also. Um, once again, I don't, does he believe this? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I did not. I will. I, I don't mind saying that. Did you, did you in the police force, uh, in, in Florida where you were working, did you ever use the PSA psychological stress evaluator as a lie detector test? Uh, no, we, uh, no, we normally can't use that because they're not a accepted in court. Uh, um, right. We do. We have used polygraph, mm -hmm. but it, you have to go through a process. Sure. But did not use that test that you're talking about. Mostly, we were just straight polygraph or yeah. um, voice stress analyzer. Well, that's it. What are the voice stress? Oh, oh. Okay. yeah, yeah. I, I'm just wondering. Maybe we should get him on the show if he agrees to take a PSEs. Uh, I would be shocked if he did. Now, if he did. That mm -hmm. would tell me something right up front that he truly believes it happened. Right. Okay. And then, then we have another issue and uh, we have another issue. I'm going to bet you right here, Rob. Okay. He won't do it. Are and you betting me another 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll bet you, I'll bet you 50 on this one. Oh, on that one. Okay. No, yeah. Not that one. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to bet he's not going to do it. And the reason being is uh, I don't I, – I think the guy is smart enough that he's not delusional. I think there's another motive here, and it may be just to to progress or to put out yeah. this story to get his 15 minutes. I, Plus, he's got a book for sale, don't forget. Yes, he does. And you know what? Um, 
more power to him if people yeah. want to read it. I, I am not going to judge the man. I, but I have the right, as, as he has the right to put forth the story, mm -hmm. I have the right to choose not to believe it. And I'm choosing not to believe it based upon my evaluation of what he said. But isn't and, it our job as, as journalists to either to either confirm or expose mm -hmm. him? Expose him if he's lying. Yes. Expose him if he has other issues that would cause him to say it. Yeah. Then I have some sympathy. Now, I have had many people on the show over the years who have claimed to be alien abductees. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say there are those that I believe, that they believe, mm -hmm. with without a, having any ulterior motive behind their claim. They truly believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that this has happened. And based on my experience doing this show and having been on the police force, like you, I can't give him one ounce of credibility. No, he, he, well, he, because things change. How we, how you're right. For all the things that we've just yeah. talked about, I would agree with you. Yeah. Um, and I think it's people like this who are, um, who, who do more damage than good because people who have had the experience mm -hmm. listen to this and, and they say, Oh, oh shoot, here we go again. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell anybody my story because now nobody's going to believe me. And it's shows like yours, Larry, that give these people the opportunity of coming on and, 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 and telling their story because of the way that you conduct your show, the way that you conduct your questioning so, you know, hats off to you for having this video. Well, I think everybody has the right to tell their story. Okay. Right. And if they're, if they are being untruthful, yeah. they're going to hang themselves. And I think that was the case here. And I think, I think that most people that would listen to it would see where I was coming from. He, you know, I don't need, I don't need to expose him. He did it himself. In, in fact, what we're going to be doing tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be doing this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We are going to be replaying your two interviews okay. with La with uh, Ronnie Dawson on our on our fifty channels. Okay. Because let's. I'm going to be putting a poll up on XCTV and XZBN. Do you believe him or you don't? Well, and you understand, there's people out there that I that do believe him. Yeah. That do believe where he's coming from now. Here, here's the question I would ask him. Have they heard his whole story or have they only heard bits and pieces? Because if they're going to believe them, I would ask that they hear the, the, his total story, listen to all the things that he's put out there. That's just my opinion. If, if they do that, they'll never, they'll, that's you know, true. That's, they'll that's run out true. of time for goodness sake. Yeah, that's true. But I, let's, let's put it to the people. Okay. People's choice. You see, your show is, you're a nice guy. You know, that's who Larry uh, Larry Lawson is. Not only are you yeah. my friend, you're a nice guy. And you got my name right that time, too. Shut up. <laughs> Where on my show, I, 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 I'm not a nice guy. You know, my, my tagline is searching for answers, demanding the truth. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there are those people. Maybe have, 32 years, nothing's changed. Whether it's Bigfoot, whether it's UFOs, whether it's uh, whatever, nothing has changed in thirty years, thirty-two years. So I, I come with it. I come with it at it from a different angle. Like you do, I, I, I don't do investigations on the paranormal like you do. And in fact, you're, you're turning me into a believer when it comes to ghosts and hauntings and things that go bump in the night because of your credibility. Well, you know. Thank you. The fact that you do what you've done and you continue to do it in an, in a very professional manner gives you and the results that you and your teams get credibility. You're willing to share evidence. You're willing to share data because that's who you are. And yet I've had many people on the show, Larry, that they start talking. It's like, goodbye. Boom. Well, I, I think a, a big part of that is that while we have all the members of my team have their personal opinions as to what mm -hmm. this is, we all recognize the fact that 
nobody truly knows what it is. Right. Nobody really knows why this is happening. So that therefore we are in search of the truth. Yeah. Whatever that truth is, we just don't know quite what it is yet. Uh, and and I guess that's what help guide helps guide us. Yeah. I, I also think that your experience as a seasoned law enforcement officer is a big part of what guides your teams. I, I think so. And I've got other, uh, I've got other first responder professionals mm -hmm. on the team, uh, another retired cop, retired firefighter, I've had other cops on the team before. Yeah. So, you know, it, it does, we, we do tend to look at it from a, a different angle maybe than right. some other folks do. You know, and I've been sitting here trying to remember the name of that person that you were talking about with the 50, with the football field UFO, Andrea Perron. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah did, I, did I, did I say her name? Oh. Well, oh, once shoot. again, yeah. I was using that as an example of there's, here's a large object in the sky, yeah. but nobody sees it. Well, and, he, I'm sorry. Uh, Daryl Sims, who claims to have been a former CIA agent uh -huh. uh, who worked with uh, Dr. Roger Lear on the extrication of alien implants, said that there is a 300 mile wide, 100 mile high UFO circling the Earth. And, you know, so I guess a mile wide or, you know, isn't that bad. But once again, these claims are being made. And because he claims he was with the CIA, and by the way, the CIA had no one knowledge of who the hell he is, he could get away with it. No one's going to no one's going to question his his statements because of who he claims he is. Well, I'm going to go back to something you just said a minute ago. Okay, you, you in, in talking about my group and then the fact yeah. that we're willing to share data and information to other teams so that we can all put it together to find out what the big picture is. Yeah. This is an example of that not happening. If that is actually out there, I'm sure it's, I don't know who this gentleman is. I'm sure he's not the only one that knows about it. Oh, yes, so, he is. He, he, no one else has ever come on their show, Larry, in 32 years and talked about it except him. Okay, well, but here's my point. Here's okay, my point. sorry. If he was to share this information and it was able to be corroborated through mm -hmm. sharing it with other professionals in the field, We'll, we'll use that term. Okay. Then they can cooperate together. And then you don't, don't just have one him, but you have several legitimate organizations that say, yep, we found it too. But if he's not sharing information and then you got to ask the question why he's not sharing right. information, you can't prove anything. And that's, and that's a mistake. A lot of people make, they don't spend the time to nurture relationships and share this information. Cause that's the only way we're going to find the answers to this. Okay. You know, one of the questions that I asked when I was interviewing him was, uh, are there any astronomers or junior astronomers who are able to, you know, to collaborate your claims? Have there been any whistleblowers who were able to, mm -hmm. you know, and the list went on and it was always no. Well, how did you get this information? I can't tell you it's classified. Yeah. Well, that's kind of changing now, though, isn't it? Now, it sure I, I, is. I, I I don't know where you're at on this. I I okay. I'm I am not I am not the seasoned F UFO guy. Uh, my side of the fence tends to be more on the on the the spiritual ghost side. Yeah. Ghost side. But now we're getting all these whistleblowers coming out all over the place, pro providing information. And or are they or are they providing disinformation? Okay, yeah, could be. But here's once again the point. People are now talking about it. People are now sharing information. So has this information come out from any of these other whistleblowers? W what information are they sharing? Hearsay. Oh, uh, it's all hearsay. There's no evidence to substantiate any of the claims that David Grush is making. None. Oh, I, I, I agree. I I I agree with what you're saying. What yeah. I'm getting at is other people are now talking about it. Well, of course. So how, what, when are the stories going to start becoming similar? Oh, when I, are, I, you know, I get you. But here's my question. With all the computer hacking that is going on, mm -hmm. okay, if there was information on UFOs held within a computer bank somewhere in the United States, don't you think that China or Russia would not be trying to access this information because if they could do that, if they could prove to the American people that their government has been lying to them 
bold-facedly since 1947, that would be a coup for them. It would, and I can't answer that question. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, if I had a balloon, I could probably, you know, float it around and find some information, though. Never, balloon. Never mind. I got it. We got to go for our final break. Stand by, old friend. <laughs> You know, I could go so many ways with that balloon story, but that's yeah, for another sure show on another day. Larry Lawson is my very special guest. And um, <laughs> as you know, members of the Exo Nation, I don't give many people a vote of credibility, but I know Larry personally. I've seen him work, and I know his team. And credibility, Thank integrity, you. and honesty is what they're all about. Visit them at floridaparanormalfbi.com. And, of course, his show is paranormalstakeout.org. We'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, and my very special guest, the one and only Larry Lawson. We'll be back. Don't go away. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games, no need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back, everyone. Larry Lawson is my very special guest, www.paranormalfbi.com, as well as his uh, radio TV show website, which is paranormalstakeout.org. As always, my good friend, thanks very much for being with us, and uh, thank Enjoyed you for it. the great work that you do. We've got about uh, 10 minutes left, according to my producer, who's sitting on the other side of the glass, giving you a thumbs up because he loves where you're coming from and he loves your show. Um we, we've talked about UFOs, and I think I think we made a, an excellent case. And I, I would imagine that, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, I want to believe, Larry. I really want to believe. But I want to see the proof. I, you know, well, for I think all, we all do. Yeah. I think we all do. Now, now, my question is, how in the name of heavens can the claims being made by David Grush be legitimate? Because my, my question is, didn't he not take an oath of secrecy as a member of the military and intelligence officer that no matter what happens because of his clearance, he's got mums the word. And, and when a whistleblower does this, I have to look at the reasoning why they do it. Is it a matter of national security? Is somebody going to die if they don't blow this whistle? Even then, you know, you may, you, you take an oath. You do. That's, yeah, that's your bond. You know, you as a police officer, mm -hmm. I know for a fact, we were privy to information, mm -hmm. information that we took an oath not to share. Cases that we were working on were classified in the police manner. Mm -hmm. Information that was around the computers was kept within us. You know, I think that ufologists at time do more harm and cause uh, cause problems with national security themselves by pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing because there's things we need to know and there's things we don't need to know. I, for one, sleep very comfortably, comfortably at night knowing that there are men and women around the world who at a moment's notice will give their life to defend my freedom and democracy. Mm -hmm. And That's I believe cool. that, and I believe, Larry, that a lot of times these UFO uh, UFO investigators, researchers, uh, conspiracy theorists 
are doing more harm than good. And I don't think they understand it. I don't think they're capable of understanding the danger that they, that they themselves cause to freedom and national security. I, I cannot disagree with you. But like you, like, like we all did in law enforcement, mm -hmm. many times when we investigate crimes or why people do what they do, we yeah. look at their motives. Yes. Motives can come from a couple of different uh, places. First is greed and the yeah. desire to be, in this case, maybe the desire to be famous. Could that be part of it? Could some of these people, uh, and I and I fully admit to you that I, you know, you have mm -hmm. talked to many more folks in the UFO field than I have, but is do they feel in some way that what's happening is endangering their country and they feel they have to do something. Could that be their motive? Another January, know. another January the 6th. I, I'm not necessarily even saying that motive yeah. is correct, but we, you know, everybody thinks differently and sometimes folks process this stuff differently. I actually agree with what you do. Uh, you know, you swear an oath, you stand by that oath. Unless yes. you're being told to do something illegal, um, immoral, or unethical, you stand by your duty. Heck, I, there were laws that I had to enforce that I didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. but they Same were the here. Law. Yeah, that's right. They were the law. Yeah. So you enforce it. So I, I, I get exactly where you're coming from. The question I have to go back is to the why. And, and could it be that most of them just want their 15 minutes? Maybe they got mad at a boss and they're going to they're gonna make them yeah. pay for it. Who knows what those motives are? But what we want to try and find are the folks that have the pure motive. Yes. Is, there a, is there a reason for them doing this? Is Are they truly in their hearts trying to save someone? Well, then articulate and tell us why. Don't come to us with a bunch of stuff and and say, well, I can't tell you where it came from. Well, dude, exactly. you're on the, you're on my show telling this me this happened. Yeah. Tell me how you know for sure. So I I, so, I sometimes wonder. I don't wonder. I know this for a fact that the media spins a lot of the false and misinformation that is out there, and they will do so in order to get ratings. If they it will bring. The leads. That's right. That's yeah. right. And and it embarrasses me a lot of the time because I. I, I've always tried to be honest with my with my listeners, my viewers, my friends, yes, you have. associates, when it comes to anything, whether it's something personal or whether it's any of the any of the shows that we do. It's it's important to me that people know that when they listen to us, they're not going to get the same old misinformation that they get on other late night paranormal talk shows. And, you know, I was offered a good lump sum of money not that many months ago. If I was to change my format, a major network would take my show, syndicate it, and go up to up against coast to coast. Mm -hmm. And I said no, because they wanted me to sensationalize. Yeah, that's and, and, and that certainly is a problem, isn't it? Uh, and and that's but see, that's why on my end of the fence, the ghost shows can mm -hmm. be very exciting because they're sensationalized. And there's good folks out there. I'm not not oh, definitely, them, but, definitely, yeah. But but they do want to sensationalize the show because nobody's going to watch it if yeah. they really saw how boring a paranormal investigation can be. It's just like police work or surveillance. So, oh. uh, a stakeout. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that's the example I use. People watch TV and movies, police stakeout, super exciting. Truth of the matter, hours and hours of boredom with, with 15 seconds of excitement. Hey, <laughs> well, when, when have you ever seen uh, the CSI folks wrap everything up in an hour or even two days, three days? It doesn't happen in reality. Uh, and if I can, if I had a nickel for everyone that said, well, I saw that they found out who, who had those <laughs> fingerprints in five minutes, I'd be rich. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. be here right now. I'd be on some island I own. You, but, you mean AFIS doesn't work that way? Yeah. No. So, Darn it. Um, but that, see, and, and, and you're also kind of hitting on where I'm trying to go. And that's for lack of a better term, keeping it real, yeah. making sure folks understand what this whole this whole thing really is. And that is, in my in my opinion, keeping an open mind, taking in all the evidence, but then sorting it out and using common sense to take it further. Don't give a story that you can't corroborate. That's what we call over here the Lawson factor. The loss. <laughs> okay. Feel free to use that anytime you want. I will. Let me write that down. <laughs> so. Now, uh, Larry, uh, there, there's a lot to be discovered out there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I think that you and your team and other teams that you associate yourself with are going to find it may not be tomorrow may not be in our generation but the work that we're both doing that you're doing and the seeds that you're planting my friend i truly believe that one day the the truth will be found whether it's man-made or whether it's you yeah. know the reality oh by the way speaking about that i loved how you asked ronnie dawson if you ever heard of the paradola effect paradola, that uh, yeah that was beautiful <laughs> yeah well i mean I, I would don't take my word for it, folks. Go to his website, look at the pictures. Just do that, please. And uh, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, Robert. <laughs> Larry, as always, time goes by too fast when you're with us, my friend. Uh, this coming week, you have Preston Dennett on your show, I believe. I do. I do. I'm very anxious to have him on there, especially with all the things. And like I said, I'm becoming much more involved in, in discussing the UFO world. And I think he's going to be a terrific guest, especially with all the things that are going on. I believe you're right, my weeks. friend. Let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and the great work that you do. Well, you could check us out Facebook on either Indian River Hauntings or Par uh, Florida Bureau of Paranormal Invasion. And, uh, <laughs> Florida Bureau of Paranormal <laughs> Investigation. <laughs> Florida um, Bureau of Invasion. <laughs> sorry, I had this UFO thing. Uh, you can catch our website, paranormalfbi.com or indianriverhauntings.com. Uh, you can also check us out on YouTube. Coming to a yuck yucks near you. <laughs> you can check us out on YouTube too at uh, Indian River Hauntings 2341 on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can write to me, ask questions at ghostguy at paranormalstakeout.com and watch the show. You might get a kick out of it. I have some Florida Bureau of Paranormal Invasion. <laughs> great way to end the show. I love you, Larry. You're a good man, and I'm proud, so proud to call you my friend. And same here. Thank you very much, Rob, for having me tonight. Please give my best to your uh, family, and I look forward to uh, working with you this coming Thursday as you talk to Preston Dennett about it'll be it'll be fun. The paranormal invasion. Okay, <laughs> I, I own it. I own it. You know what? That one beats the doggy style comment. I don't know. I thought <laughs> you know we could have asked him if that was the cat's meow. <laughs> uh, did she like? Did she like meow mix? Where do you take a cat lady for a date? And how often does she change her litter box? That's what I want. To know. You got me. I'm... Good night, Larry. Take care, my friend. Thanks you for having too. me on the show. All right, XO Nation. We'll be back on the top of the hour as once again we continue our conversation discussing the world of the paranormal and parapsychology here in the X Zone. And how soon we're going to be invaded. <laughs> Oh, you and my friend make me laugh sometimes. Have a good night, my friend. <laughs> you too, Larry.